Hey friend, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Billy Chan. You know, I like books and I like to read it and I like to connect to people. Today, I'm fairly excited that I have my friend, my best friend, Mark Hongbing, together with us to share about my mapping. My map is a really amazing tool that you can use to take notes. It mimics how your brain works and you can easily know what you have written down and extract the information as soon as you need it. So today, we are going to have Mark to share it with us and let's dive into what Mark's going to say. All right. Okay. Hi, this is Mark here. So um, yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for attending the uh, sharing. So um, a couple of years ago, right, I came across this uh, fascinating book by uh, Tony uh, Bazin, uh, The Ultimate Book of Mind Map. And it's actually provided a tremendous opportunity for me to shift the paradigm of how I think about our brain and mind since then. So in this sharing, I would like to humbly share and advocate some knowledge surrounding mind mapping and hoping that it could actually help to uh, unlock our creativity, to boost your memory and maybe to the extent of uh, making changes to your life, All right? Why mind map? So in fact, mind maps are a unique thinking tool that will actually bring out your natural genius and enable you to shine in many areas uh, of your life. So there are a set of questions that you could probably ask yourself, as well as you can see from the diagram here at the lower right corner. So do you want to uh, uh, come up with uh, innovative ideas and uh, creative solutions do you want to set goals and achieve them? Do you want to deliver ex uh, excellent uh, presentations uh, with uh, confidence? Do you want to memorize info and record it under pressure? Do you want to run meetings with uh, efficiency and ease? So if you have uh, answered yes to any of these questions, right, then this book is definitely a good guide to using this uh, remarkable tool so um, my maps actually wonderfully changed my life for a battle. And I know that they will do the same for you too. All right. So what is the mind map, right? So um, according to Michael Michalko, the author of a book uh, with the title Cracking Creativity. Okay. So he once said that a mind map is the whole brain alternative to linear thinking. So it uh, reaches out in uh, all directions and catches uh, thoughts from any angle. So in fact, mind map is a powerful thinking tool, just like a Swiss uh, army knife of your brain, which actually provides an easiest way to put information into your brain and to take information out of your brain. So it's a creative yet an effective means of uh, note-taking techniques that actually literally maps up your uh, of thoughts just like a map of a city. So the center of the city is uh, like this. Uh, the center is actually like the center of the city and then represents your most uh, important idea. And then the main roads actually leading from the center uh, represent the main thoughts in your thinking process. And then the secondary roads uh, represent your secondary thoughts and so on, right? So just like a road map, uh, mind map will uh, help you to learn and organize and store as much of uh, information as you want and to classify it in natural ways that uh, give you easy and instant access. So with mind map, a long list of uh, boring information can be turned into colorful, highly organized, memorable memorable uh, diagrams that works in line with your brain's uh, natural way of doing things. And it's actually used uh, color, curve lines, symbols, words, and images, according to a set of uh, simple, uh, basic, and natural and brain-friendly rules. And with my map, uh, remembering or uh, recalling info la information later is far easier and more reliable than traditional note-taking techniques. So by giving this pluses, right? So it actually can give an uh, overview of a large uh, subject or idea and then enable you to plan or make ch uh, choices and will let you know where you are going and where you have been. And it can actually gather together um, large amounts of uh, info and data in one place 
And with that, it actually can encourage uh, problem solving by allowing you to see new creative pathways. And uh, of course, my maps is uh, also en enjoyable to look at, to read, and to review, and to remember. All right. Okay, so how can my maps help? Um, first of all, it saves time, right? So you can study faster and more efficiently. And then it allows you to see the whole picture. Uh, it helps uh, demonstrate connections between isolated pieces of info. And uh, it will actually activate your whole brain and give you a clear picture of both the details and the big picture. And allows you to actually group and regroup concepts. And it also encourages uh, comparison. Okay, and then uh, third, um, it clears your mind of uh, mental clutter, so it can help to organize and clarify your thoughts, allows you to communicate and plan and solve problems and be more creative, and uh, it also allows you to focus on the subject, right, so it actually requires you to uh, concentrate on the subject, which uh, helps to transfer your information that you learn from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. So uh, it can help to help you to remember better. So in short, it actually can help you to become a better planner, a better uh, problem solver, or a more confident uh, public uh, speaker. Okay, so when you start mind mapping, you will be joining the club of uh, great geniuses who all use the um, major elements of the mind maps are guidelines to make their thoughts visible and those to help them make uh, great uh, creative works. So in fact, the entire Italian uh, Renaissance was actually generated by those uh, great um, creative geniuses who escaped from their linear thinking prisons. So they made their thoughts and ideas visible not only through words but also with more powerful language of images. So for a perfect example here of a great uh, creative genius using the language of uh, vision to generate thousands of uh, brilliant groundbreaking ideas, you just have to take a look at the uh, notebooks of uh, Leonardo da Vinci. So uh, da Vinci actually used uh, images, diagrams, symbol, illustrations, and graph as the purest way to capture on paper the thoughts that were flashing in his head. So as well, I can see here, Da Vinci, who actually voted as the brain of the last millennium, realized that the language of words uh, uh, took second place to the language of images. And words uh, was used just to label and describe his creative thoughts. But the prime tool uh, for his uh, creative thinking was the language of images. So in his uh, notebooks, uh, he would literally do the way with uh, a lot of uh, random thoughts that came to his mind. And then out of this uh, would actually leap the genius's uh, ideas. So the key takeaways is that the brain has the natural aptitude for visual recognition. So this is why you are much more likely to remember info when you use the images to represent it. All right. And Galileo was another of the uh, world's uh, great creative thinking uh, geniuses who in the 17th century helped to rev revolutionize uh, science um, by using his own uh, note-taking techniques with uh, illustrations and diagrams. You can see all these uh, diagrams and um, notes, right? And of course, uh, Richard Feynman, as well, you can see from the top right corner here, uh, this is actually the Feynman's uh, hand of the first uh, Feynman diagram. Indeed, the uh, archetype, which he had originated in uh, 1949 to represent the fundamental process of uh, quantum electrodynamics. So this archetype shown uh, two electron uh, exchange uh, virtual proton, and later he actually decided to put the entire uh, QED um, into the freshly uh, visual and uh, diagrammatic form, like this one, yeah. Um, this actually led to his uh, developing the new, uh, the now uh, famous uh, Feynman diagrams, uh, which is actually a pictorial representation of uh, particle interaction. 
uh, which are now uh, used uh, throughout the world by physics students, all right? And the ingredients for your mind map recipe are very few and very simple, actually. So you just need a piece of uh, blank paper, a set of uh, colored uh, pens or pencil, your brain, your imagination, or maybe some mind maps uh, software. For example, uh, Free Mind is uh, actually a freeware, or Simple Mind uh, is a paid software, or uh, things like that, right? So please take note that uh my map is not a test of your artistic ability in fact powerful software like simple mind pro can actually provide all handy tools for you to generate your mind maps uh, easily uh, with uh, attractive uh, pictures icons and diagrams all right okay so this slide introduce you to mind maps and how they work so it explained the basic mind maps rules and take you step by step through your first mind map. So uh, first of all, start in the center of a blank page. Um, and um, uh, why? Uh, because it actually can give your brain freedom to spread out in all directions and to express itself more uh, freely and naturally. And then the second rule is that you probably uh, want to use the image and picture for your center idea because the images actually helps you to use your imagination. A central image is more interesting uh, and keep you focused and help you concentrate. And then you, uh, you might want to use uh, color throughout because uh, colors are as exciting to your brain as uh, images. It actually adds uh, extra vibrancies and uh, life to your mind map and add uh, tremendous energy to your uh, creative thinking. Okay, and then um, make your branches curve rather than uh, straight line um, because having nothing but straight lines is uh, boring to your brain. So uh, you might want to make it more organic like the branches of tree, which is more uh, far more uh, attractive to your eye. Okay, and then um, you need to connect your main branches to the center and then connect your second or third branches to the first and second level. And then um, your brain actually uh, works by associations, right? So it likes to link two or three or more things together because the uh, connection can actually help you to understand and remember a lot more easier. Okay, so it actually lay out the basic structure and architecture of your thoughts. Okay, and another time rule is that you probably want to keep one keyword per line um, because uh, each word generating its own special array of associations and connections. And single keywords spark off more ideas and more thoughts, more, more new thoughts than uh, phrases and sentences. Okay, so use uh, image throughout because uh, picture paints a thousand words. So if you have uh, 10 images in your mind map, it's already the, the equal of uh, 10,000 words of notes. All right. So uh, this slide show you how to create a mind map for your holiday planning. So first of all, use the landscape rather than portrait. And then uh, first of all, you draw an image in the center of your uh, page, right? Then label the image and then you draw some thick branches radiating out from the center and then use a different color for each. And then on, on each branch, uh, main branch, uh, you print clearly and in capital letter the first uh, six single keywords. In this case, um, the type of your holiday, yeah, uh, be it uh, um, cultural, museum, uh, uh, travel, or you know, uh, some breakaway um, uh, holidays or things like that. And then equipment, and then uh, clothes that you want to take along. Uh, shut down because you need probably you need to tell your colleague uh your colleague about your uh your holiday uh, uh schedule right and uh, asking them for coverage and things like that and then budget and booking and things like that right and then use associations to expand this uh, mind map to its uh, next uh, stage so take a look at the keywords 
do, do this uh, keywords uh, spark off uh, further ideas and then you can draw further branches radiating, radiating out uh, from each uh, keyword in order to accommodate the uh, associations that you made. All right, and um, congrats. So you have just uh, completed your first uh, mind map. You will notice that your mind map is now uh, blooming with uh, symbols, codes, lines, colors, images, and it's uh, already demonstrating all the basic guidelines that you need in order to apply your brain more uh, effectively and enjoyable. So even better when it comes to organize uh, your, your holiday, you have everything on a single piece of paper. So everything is here. So you just have to take a look and you, will, you can actually get all the information out instantly. Okay, so knowing about how your brain works can be likened to knowing how to drive a car. So the better you, your knowledge uh, of uh, driving and how to do it, the better at driving you will be. So if you understand how your brain likes to learn and function, it will actually reward you by working better for you and you will find it easier to come up with uh, ideas, to remember info and to find creative uh, solutions to problems. So the way you draw a mind map actually reflect the manner in which your brain likes to think. And um, yeah, so let's don't spend too much time on this uh, mini brain uh, quiz but I just want to trigger your curiosity about your brain. So let's uh, eyeballing through this list of multiple choice questions. And you could either type or jot down on a piece of paper or in the chat window here. Then uh, later I could actually provide answers to these questions in the following slide. So just take it easy, no, for, no pressure. Okay, so uh, First of all, the first question, the number of brain cells in the human brain is, um, yeah, you, so you have uh, multiple choice here, uh, ranging from 100,000 uh, 100, uh, up to, uh, we have uh, 12 zeros here. So it's uh, 1 million million, right? And then the brain of an insect like the bee contains uh, millions of brain cells, whether it's true or false. And then the populations of brain cells in your head is larger than the number of uh, human beings on planet Earth. Uh, we have been able to photograph a still picture of a brain cell, but have not yet been able to video a living brain cell. Is that true? Um, the great geniuses in history, such as uh, Da Vinci, Isaac Newton, Marie Curie, and Albert Einstein, probably uh, reaches, uh, reach uh, their maximum potential. The human brain can grow new connections between brain cells as it ages, but cannot generate, uh, generate uh, entire new cells. The number of patterns of uh, thoughts possible for your brain is equal to the number of atoms in a uh, molecule or our galaxy or, you know, um, and it's uh, 200 million stars. Your brain is hardwired. There's not much you can do to change its ability. Uh, true or false. And then the world's uh, best uh, computers are now better than the human brain in their basic potential. The cerebral cortex is a part of the brain normally referred to as the left and right brain. The right uh, cerebral cortex is the creative side of the brain. Is that true? The left uh, cerebral cortex is the academic and uh, intellectual side of the brain. Is, is it true? Yeah. Okay, so let's take a look at the, uh, this slide, our evolving knowledge of our evolving brains. So although the brain, as we know, is, is actually begun evolving some uh, 500 million years ago, uh, brain science has a much, a much uh, shorter history actually. As little as uh, 2,500 years ago, humankind knew uh, virtually nothing about brain and its uh, internal uh, workings. And before the ancient Greek uh, philosopher, like uh, Aristotle, the mind was not even considered to be part of the uh, human body, but was thought to exist as uh, some form of uh, spirit, right? So even Aristotle, the most uh, famous uh, philosophical thinker and the founder of the modern science actually concluded that the center of sensation and memory was actually located in the heart. 
So during the Renaissance period in the late uh, 14th century, a period of uh, great uh, intellectual awakening, it was actually finally realized that the center of thoughts and consciousness was actually located in the head. And it was not until the late uh, 20th century that we have a uh, brain science to study our brain. And um, actually 95% of all that the human race has uh, ever discovered about the internal working of our own brain has been discovered in the last uh, 10 years, okay? And uh, we know now more about the timeline of the evolving brain. So you can take a look at this uh, mind map, right? So um, you can see that different parts of the brain actually control different functions. Um, like for example, the stem, the brain stem, uh, which actually began uh, evolving uh, some 500 million years ago, uh, it actually controls your life supporting functions such as uh, breathing and heart, heart rate, right? And then the uh, uh, cerebellum or the hind brain, which actually control the movement of the body in space and uh, store memories for basic uh, uh, learned responses. And then, uh, 200 to 300 million years ago, um, uh, we started to have this uh, limbic system, uh, which actually includes the hypothalamus and amygdala. The limbic system is actually critical for learning and short-term memory, but also uh, used to maintain uh, our blood pressure, our uh, body temperature, and our blood sugar level. And then uh, the cerebrum, right? So the cerebrum is actually the cerebral uh, cortex, which actually cover, uh, covers the rest of the brain. And the cerebrum is actually responsible for the vast range of skill, including uh, memory, communication, decision-making, and creativity, and uh, understanding, and things like that. So uh, it, is, it is actually the flower of uh, evolution so it is actually the latest part of the brain to develop. And it is the part that allows us to do uh, mind mapping. So as the cerebrum uh, controls all the major uh, memory and learning skill that we rely on to make us shine as uh, an individual. So if we understand how to tap into the full power of the cerebrum, we can actually strengthen our mental and physical performance in every area of our life. All right, so uh, with the development of the microscope, it was actually discovered that the brain's uh, crumpled outer layer was uh, far more complex than we thought. So it was found out that the brain was uh, composed of uh, thousands of tiny river of uh, blood vessels that feeding the brain. And there were many more uh, neuron cells than previously had been taught. And that each uh, one appear to have a tiny extension radiate out from it. And in the last uh, half of the 20th uh, century, it was discovered that the number of brain cells was not just a few million. It was a uh, million million. So one followed by 12 zeros. All right. Then uh, it's actually 166 times the number of people on the planet. And it was so, the cell was so tiny that you can actually fit uh, 100, 100 of them onto a single pin head. And the human brain can actually generate uh, thousands of new brain cells every day. And the number of patterns of thoughts possible for your brain is actually in, infinite. So at the same time, as you make uh, mental connections in your thoughts, you are making physical connection in your brain as well. So you are literally making that incredible brains of yours uh, more complex, more sophisticated, and more powerful with every thought connection. So it's the, your brain is actually dynamic and organic. So the brain with uh, which you are reading this now is therefore not the same as it, it was yesterday, and it will not be the same tomorrow. So uh, there will be new connections uh, new uh, dendrit and axion connection every day when you learn. Yeah, and look at this mind map. It's uh, quite interesting because it's actually used uh, the structure of a neuron to draw it as a mind map. So at the center, you have this uh, nucleus 
and then branch out, you have all the dendrite, and then you have the axion, and then it shows the uh, vesicles that firing the impulses in between them. Yeah. So um, yeah, so it's quite interesting. So when you look at it, you can memorize all this uh, hard number and hard fact, right? For example, uh, one million million, you know, and then the Earth uh, population. Yeah. Okay, so surprisingly, the bee and every other living animal has the same uh, so-called super bio uh, computer chip as a human. And a bee has a, a, approximately uh, nine, 960,000 brain cells, close to 1 million. Yeah, so it's less than uh, a human, but uh, what can a bee do? In fact, a bee can do a lot of stuff, so let's take a look. Let's start from here and then we do go clockwise. So build, okay? So bees are among the master architects of the insect world actually can construct uh, complex hives that can house the uh, entire community, okay? And uh, they can actually reproduce, they can care for their young ones, and then they can count and remember. Bee can actually locate uh, uh, chosen object again by remembering the number of uh, uh, so-called significant items and they can think as well yeah they can think and then they can control for example they can uh, regulate the temperature uh, when the hive become too hot then a group of bee will work in, in, in conjunctions and in harmony to reset the temperature of the hive to within one tenth of the degree uh, century height using their wings as a fan to actually increase and decrease the airflow inside the hive. And they can hear just like us, then they can touch, they can taste, they can smell, and they can see as well. And they can even see um, ultraviolet spectrum. And they can fight, not only fight, but fight with the uh, coordination. And then they can distinguish uh, each other. They can recognize friends or enemies. And then they can dance. Yeah, they can dance, and uh, when the bees return to the hive, they can perform complex dance that convey messages to their friends about the location information about a new find, and they can communicate by movement, by sound, um, uh, you know, and uh, gesture. The bees can actually communicate uh, to others information concerning the plant locations and types of flowers, for example. And they can collect uh, pollen and, uh, of course, collect information as well. Yeah, they can eat, they can produce uh, honey. Yeah, so, and they can even uh, behave and live in and organize a community and behave uh, appro uh, appropriately. And they can make decisions. So bees can decide to change the temperature. Uh, to regulate the temperature of the hive or to convey or not to convey information and to fight or to migrate, right? All right, so um, in the uh, 1950s, uh, Professor Roger Spurry, this guy, and his team actually performed some incredible uh, experiment on the cerebral cortex and they asked students to actually perform different, different kind of mental tasks for example, daydreaming, calculating, reading, drawing, speaking, uh, writing, coloring the shapes and listening to the music. And at the same time, they actually measure their brain waves. Okay. So um, they observe that in general, the cerebral cortex divides the task into two main uh, categories, the left brain and the uh, right brain uh, task. So the right brain task includes um, uh, rhythm, uh, spatial awareness, imagination, uh, daydreaming, uh, color, dimension, and tasks that are needing uh, holistic or whole picture awareness. And then the left brain task includes uh, the words, logic, numbers, sequence, and your analytics uh, skill. Okay, so people who had trained in skills that rely more on one side of their brain than the other side went on to actually form uh, dominant habits that favor activities controlled by their chosen brain site. So uh, by combining the elements of this two hemisphere, 
it is possible to achieve a surprising, uh, surprisingly huge increment in overall performance. So, uh, uh, as well, I can see here, there's a bridge in between called uh, corpus uh, callosum that connect both sides of your brain. Yeah, and uh, you need to make full use of this bridge to pass information in between two hemispheres. But uh, unfortunately, our modern uh, education system um, actually have had a tendency to flavor the left hand, uh, left brain skill, like for example, mathematics, languages, and the science uh, over the uh, arts, music, and the teaching of uh, thinking skills, especially uh, creative thinking skills. So in focusing on only one side of the brain skills, you would think, think that our education system uh, literally creating half wits is not balanced actually. So um, daydreaming actually can give uh, needed rest to those parts of your brain which have been doing more uh, analytical and repetitious uh, work and uh, exercises your projective and imaginative uh, thinking and that it will actually give you a necessary, necessary chance to integrate and create. So most of the great geniuses actually use uh, directed daydreaming to help them solve problems, uh, to generate ideas and achieve their great goals. Okay, so um, yeah, so I think the key uh, message here is that you need to use your brain uh, in the balanced way. All right. Okay, so the brain principles of uh, synergy. So the brain actually works on two important principles, uh, the synergy and uh, repetition. So if you rely heavily on one side of your brain and ignore the other, you are actually drastically reduce the overall uh, potential of your brain. The brain is actually operating in the uh, uh, synergetic way. And uh, in this uh, system, the whole is uh, actually greater than the sum of its parts. Um, meaning um, one plus one will equal more than two. And in such a system, more can actually reach uh, uh, infinity. All right. For example, when you are daydreaming, you are actually engaging not in the additive thinking behavior, but in uh, multiplying uh, synergistic uh, thinking. So key takes away is that uh, you are the architect of yourself. You are the engineer and architect of your own uh, physical brain. All right. Okay, so the learning principle of uh, repetition. So the more your brain is used well, the more successful becomes its uh, performance. So this uh, principle applies to learning as well and to the development of all uh, mental and physical skills, for example, to, uh, for example, uh, to cut a complex uh, route or pathway through a patch of the virgin jungle from one side to the other. The first time that you go through there would be a lot of uh, resistance uh, to your passage, right? And the resistance to your passageway would be a little less uh, each time you repeat the same route. Yeah. So for many years, we are taught that uh, 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 GIGO, garbage in, garbage out, is true for the human brain. Uh, because as uh, in the computer system, you put garbage into your computer, you will get garbage out of it, right? But we now know that this is not so for our brain because of the synergy principle. In the case of human brain, it's actually G-I-G-G. So for computer, it's a garbage in, garbage out, right? But for our brain, it's actually garbage in, garbage, and they, they actually strike out the out and uh, it becomes gross. Yeah? So um, how far that can this uh, garbage go? Uh, the answer is uh, infinitely because of the brain principles of uh, synergy and repetition, our brain can be both uh, infinite, uh, infinitely creative and infinitely uh, destructive as well. So the power to use your brain positively and to the greatest effect lies in your hand. All right. So the way that the left and right side of your cerebral cortex uh, pass messages uh, between the two hemispheres uh, of the brain 
uh, still remember uh, there's a part of the brain that called uh, corpus uh, callosum actually creates uh, a synergic formula for thinking and growth. So you need to make full use of the bridge to pass information in between two hemispheres of your brain. So if you rely too heavily on parts that challenge uh, only one side of your brain, you will discourage the dialogues between uh, the two hemispheres and drastically reduce the overall performance of your brain. Yeah. So in short, you will restrict your brain synergy way of thinking. Um, uh, and uh, the more you repeat the pattern of uh, thinking of uh, behavior, uh, behavior, the easier it is actually for your brain to think in that way again. So if you always uh, favor left or your right side associated task, you will reinforce that dominance. So this means that you will become stuck in a particular, uh, particular uh, pattern of thinking and you will find it uh, much more difficult to tap into your full potential. So mind maps actually encourage uh, both sides of your brain because they use uh, images, uh, color, imagination in combinations with words, uh, number, and logic. So it's actually encourage uh, uh, synergistic thinking and all the uh, ideas on the uh, mind map are actually linked to each other. Yeah, uh, it's actually help your brain to make a great leaps on uh, of uh, un understanding and imaginations, but uh, by uh, the associations and connections. All right, so as well, you can see from here, top A plus top B is, um, it goes infinitely, right? Okay, so learning how to learn. So in any learning situations, for example, uh, learning to play uh, musical instruments, swimming, or uh, learning to uh, have a communication skill and things like that, right? There are certain common variables uh, such as, uh, as well I can see from here, the degree of your success, the time you have to learn and practice, and also the learning trials. So learning trial is actually the number of times you actually try, do, practice, and uh, study. So that's also the underlying goal of all learning. So I think uh, most of the people, we thought that we can get better with every trial. Yeah. So uh, according to the book, 99% uh, of the world population is using a wrong and destructive formula for every uh, learning situation. And if you look at this graph, right, this is a typical graph, gra uh, graph of a learning curve. And uh, you can see that this is not a linear graph, but it's actually a non-linear graph. As, uh, and uh, average curve is the summated uh, form of a norm of uh, all individual curves. However, each uh, individual curve is individual and unique, and it has uh, its own uh, special pattern, right? So uh, will there be a failure? Of course, there'll be failure. So this uh, black uh, ball represents the giant uh, astronomical uh, black hole of learning, which is the failure, right? So does everyone have uh, more than one such failure in your life? Of course they do. And does everyone at uh, same time make the same mistake? Sometimes uh, make the same mistake twice? Of course they do, right? So uh, when, we, when we face failure, uh, I think uh, our verbal responses to failure is, um, for example, I quit, I give up, I, uh, I just can't do it, I'm a loser. I never should have tried this. I have no talent on this. Uh, I didn't want to do it anyway. Yeah. So those are negative uh, verbal responses to failures that can make you feel uh, disgraced, um, dignified, shameful, discouraged, and demotivated. Right. Okay. So in fact, the human brain is not designed to get better with every try. The brain is actually designed on a far more realistic, experimental, and exciting way. And if you understand the Tafkas success uh, formula, you will understand the true nature of learning and the proper nature of failures. And trial is just a small part of the formula. All right. 
So Tefkus can be considered as your brain applications and adaptations of the scientific methods. So the scientific methods for thinking is the method uh, for improving your internal uh, mind map thought structure. So it is the basics, basis of uh, all the great uh, discovery in science. Because uh, in the scientific methods, you start with the questions or hypothesis, and then through a series of investigation, you observe the feedback, and then you, uh, uh, you uh, check the results again um, against the uh, original questions uh, or hypothesis, and then the conclusions can draw uh, with which either uh, confirm or contradict with your hypothesis, right? So on the basis of this, the scientists actually can then adjust their actions to the uh, ongoing pursuit of uh, knowledge and then try again. So as well, you can see from here, um, for example, say the crown, crown is a learning, a learning to juggle the balls here. So first of all, try so your learning progress is marked by your number of trials. So when you are learning to juggle the ball, for this example, you must first throw the ball. So this is your trial. And then there'll be event. So in juggling, the event may be that the ball lands on the floor or lands on your head or lands in your hand or lands in even your coffee cup, right? Which is actually a disaster. So the universe doesn't really care. So if you try, uh, there will be always an event. So this event will uh, give you feedbacks, right? And then the feedbacks, um, the universe supplies you with the cascaded uh, information about your tries and event that feed back through all your senses. Your brain will actually absorb this feedback on both uh, the conscious and paraconscious level. Yeah, so your subconsciously as you can pick up those feedbacks as well. So in the juggling example, this will include the sight, the sound, and the feeling of the juggling balls, the feeling that the ball is uh, dropping on your hand and things like that, right? So check, this will actually happen both uh, automatically and consciously and will be done in relation to your goals. So in the juggling example, your brain will check the energy that you put into the attempt, uh, you, the, the energy that you use to throw the ball, yeah? It's the uh, appropriateness, the height, and the trajectory of the ball uh, in relation to the goal, your breathing and your poise and your posture and things like that, right? And then adjust. You will actually compare your performance uh, against your goal, whether it's actually landed in your hand or it's actually landed on the floor and make what you consider to be appropriate uh, re realignment for the next try. So it's like you tuning the, the knobs of the, you know, the, the, the adjust, uh, adjustment. And then success, right? So no matter what you do, your brain's aim is to succeed in doing it. And all success is, is the result of failure, actually. Okay? So... Before you succeed, you need to try again and again until you get it right. So it's, it is uh, essential that your goal in uh, Tefkus, uh be towards a positive uh, success, okay? So uh, key takeaway is that a society that encourages uh, failure by default actually encourages uh, success. The greatest uh, obstacle to progress and success is the fear of uh, failure, right? So Tefkus. Uh, remember, Tefkus is actually the success formula, formula, right? Trial, event, feedback, check, adjust, and success. Okay, so the principle of success. So the success uh, principle is the culmination of Tefkus. You were born and you try. So success, 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 and then you get an error. So uh, it's actually an alarm. So you check your feedback and immediately you adjust and then redirect the goals towards the success of survival. And then you try again and repeat it, so on and so forth for the rest of your life. So you are in every sense of words, right? A success story. You are designed for success. So we need to actually have a paradigm shift from to get better with every try to another concept, to learn with every try. 
And now we finally know the true nature of failure. So is this try a failure? So no, it is not. It's simply another event. So you, you should take it as an event. And these events are part of the natural learning process of your brain. And they are going to, uh, to occur anyway. So don't fear them and get yourself uh, into a meta-negative uh, thinking spiral. All right, so the principle of persistence uh, is actually designed to help you establish a permanent, stronger, and bigger internal mind map patterns of thoughts. So the importance of uh, persistence was uh, summed up best by the most uh, productive, creative mind of the last 300 years, uh, Thomas Edison. Yeah, Thomas Edison, who actually holds the records of the uh, largest number of individual patents. Uh, as well as uh, being famous for his uh, inventions of the light bulb, right? So Edison is equally re renowned uh, for his uh, famous uh, quotation about uh, genius. Yeah? Genius is 1% uh, inspiration plus 99% uh, uh, perspiration. So Edison as you went through uh, close to 9,000 uh, experiments to perfect the light bulb, all right? So as what you can see from the mind map here, persistence is uh, in fact the engine of learning and intelligence. When it comes to mind maps of thoughts, it is the engine of all creative efforts and of all genius. It is the try, 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 try again uh, in Tafkas. So as what you can see, uh, try, 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 all right? Okay, so creative is the key to your mental success. So creativity is the key to your mental success, both uh, in terms of uh, coming up with uh, startling uh, and original ideas and in terms of uh, memorizing whatever you want. So you can explore this mind map uh, when you are free. Uh, it's quite interesting actually, yeah. So use the uh, note-taking uh, technique, uh, use mind maps, yeah to plan your life your, 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 and your, your uh, daydreaming is actually good to help you uh, on some, uh, to culture, uh, cultivate your, your, your creative uh, nature. Okay, so mind maps and Tafkas. Um, uh, this is basically the all-in-one mind maps for the success uh, formula. I always like to revise my learning with mind maps, for example, this one. So my maps are an excellent way to explore your successes and your successes in progress within a TAFCAS. And they will help you objectively uh, to assess what is uh, working and what is not, and to learn from your events and to plan for your next uh, success. And my maps are an extremely brain-friendly tools that uh, encourage uh, synergistic thinking and make it uh, easy for you to plan for and analyze your our successes, all right? And uh, my maps are actually idea work tools as well. So they enable you to plan, organize, schedule, and brainstorm more memorable and uh, efficiently than ever before. So you can actually take a large uh, uh, sheet of paper and then in the center, you draw an image that best uh, represents your meeting, for example. And then uh, you can use the flip chart, whiteboard, graph, or whatsoever, then uh, radiate main branches of the center image, detailing the main areas that you want to organize. For example, the name of the uh, meeting, uh, where the meeting is to be held, the time and date of the meeting, and the equipment or supplies and that uh, will be needed. For example, uh, a coffee, water, paper, uh, lunch box, and things like that. And then the subject and agenda of the meeting and so on. So of the each uh, main branch, you can then radiate uh, sub-branches detailing your decision making. And you can even capture your meeting minutes. And you will find that uh, it's much better than taking your normal, boring, instantly forgettable uh, linear notes that, you know, just linearly jot down everything. So besides, uh, my maps also make excellent uh, speaking plans too. Um, uh, mapping your thoughts out before your presentation or even a job interview 
will ensure that your mind will naturally make connections between your points and so you will find easier to remember them uh, which will actually boost your confidence in your own speech or even in your job interview right and if you have time pay a closer look into all these mind maps that i collected for for sure that you will find uh, lots of uh, interesting thingy uh, in that in, in it right for example uh, this is for the networking and this is for uh, shopping for gift, uh, writing an essay. Uh, what about make a powerful business plan, uh, romantic weekend, uh, learning a language, uh, wedding planning or designing your own uh, garden, planning a budget, uh, creative uh, problem solving. Yeah, so I think that. Uh, pretty much all that I want to share. So as you now know, um, there are no limits to the number of thoughts, ideas, and connections that your brain can make. Yeah, so which means that there are no limits to the different ways you can use uh, mind maps to help you. And you are now in uh, positions of the thinking tool which can transform the way you think forever. When you use some mind maps on the daily basis, you will find that your life become uh, more uh, productive and fulfilled and uh, successful on every level and uh, with that you can become an ideas person you can achieve what you want to achieve with mind maps as uh, guidance and you can become more uh, efficient and more productive so i wish you uh, every success and uh, every enjoyment on your mind map journey uh, with the universe of your brain Thank you for watching. If you like video like this, do check out some learning videos that we have in the book club. Do like and subscribe to us because we are going to have a book club sharing chat like this every month. See you and happy learning guys!